Hello there, it's Caroline here from Useful Graphic Design Tutorials and today we're going to take you through another tutorial on GIMP and we're going to show you how to add a watermark to one of your images. Before we do that, I just want to very quickly cover why you would even want to do that. And there's three main things, possibly more, but three main things that a watermark can do. Firstly, it can discourage thieves, there's no doubt about that. It makes it really difficult for people to take credit for your work when your name is plastered all over the photo. Secondly, the copyright issue. Although you don't actually need the watermark on your page for it to be copyrighted, copyrighted? Copywritten, perhaps, is better English. If you do so, it will remind people who the photo belongs to, and it will definitely act as a deterrent. And thirdly, free advertising, really. Having your information on a photo will help you to get recognised. You could also use your website on the watermark. You could add your web address. I mean, it really just depends on, on which way you want to go. So let's move on and show you how to put the watermark on. We're going to use the image of the trees that Davini used in a previous tutorial where she cropped and removed a couple of the lampposts. Now that image is on my computer and to access it we need to go to File, Open and then ferret around uh, to find the correct image. Well this is one I did earlier so we're going to double click on that and that's brought the image into GIMP. So over here on the right hand side is the background layer for the image and we're going to just duplicate that. A couple of ways to do this. I tend to just right click and then press duplicate layer but of course as we've taught you in previous videos you can go down to the duplicate button click that and there you've got it. In fact now we're in triplicate so we'll just highlight one of those and get rid of it. And the reason we're doing that is as a safety net because we've got the original image there and if we want to go back to that for any whatever reason we still have it. Okay so let's click on to the original or no we will we'll click on to the background copy. So we now want to create some text and to do that we go over to the text tool and double click on that and the text function box pops up here. Firstly uh, we want to look at the font style and to access that just click on once on the font box. That brings up all the font styles that are on your computer. I say that because you might see some font styles here which you think oh that's rather nice but uh, in fact it's on my computer and yours may be different. So what should we choose? Let's go Seago print. Seem to have got a bit of a thing about Seago. Is that how you say it? Next function is to choose the size and we found that 200 pixels on this sort of photograph works really well but obviously do play around with that and you simply just you know toggle up toggle down in the normal sort of way for size. Hinting and anti-aliasing, uh, forget that actually the, the hinting should be already on colour, well the colour is shown up in this box here which corresponds to the following, uh, the foreground colour there. So click on colour and you choose whatever it is that you want. You see I, I tend to go with a grey um, which is kind of down here, a little bit um, greyer there and then press OK for that. Do you want to justify it right, left or central? Well mine's to the left here, well let's, let's move it to centre. Okay, and that's pretty much it. So we now click on the image and a box appears. Now then, don't worry if that doesn't happen with your screen. I've pressed something on GIMP and I can't actually get back to the default. I will eventually find out, but what happens with mine is that the, the text editor just appears, whereas in fact yours should look a bit like that. Toolbox on the left, layers a box on the right and the GIMP editor in the middle. Uh, so don't worry if it doesn't look exactly like this. The point being we're now going to put in our text into this box and I, oops, I'm going to put Davina Braun and I'm going to add a little copyright image, one which I'd ferret around and found earlier and co oh, oops, copied in there, obviously not well enough so there we go, we're going to copy that and then paste there you can see that little uh, letter there. I'm going to choose the selected font and close. 
You can adjust the size if you need to be, but you can't adjust the text in the text box. You have to go over here and put, say, 100 in there and change it in that way. Okay. See, that's now... In fact, I think I prefer that. So you can increase the size of the text box by simply grabbing hold of the handles on the corner but you can't actually change the size of the text in size. You have to just simply do that over here. OK, well we'll close down that. We want to change the opacity of the box and that is done by highlighting your layer, which is already highlighted, and then sliding the opacity ruler down and down and down. OK, I think that's fine. You may want yours to be a little bigger. OK, we're now going to make two of those because we're going to actually watermark it in two places. So again, I'm going to duplicate that, duplicate layer, or you could use the icon down the bottom here. Then we need to go over to the Move tool to actually separate those. So that's the Move tool here. And then grab hold of one of them. Oops. Yes, you have to make sure that you grab hold of the uh, the actual text itself and of course with writing particularly if it's smaller um, it, it being very skinny um, sometimes that can be quite tricky to do so the best thing to do is actually just to increase the size of it using the magnifying tool we're now going to rotate both of these actually um, to do that we need to move over to the rotate tool double click on that and the rotate functions box appears and just to go down a little bit there what we suggest you do is to click on the item to be rotated itself and then slide the ruler as to the degree to which you wish and then click on rotate and cleverly it has been rotated do the same thing for the other one click on there and on the rotate box appears and just rotate it that way and then rotate. Okay and then go back to the move tool if you want to move it yes you see <laughs> move it up here I mean to be honest you wouldn't really do this select the watermark you want to move on the layer and then move it down there a little bit. I mean, that looks crazy, doesn't it? But you get the gist of what we're suggesting there. OK, so really that's it. That's how you create a watermark on your images. If you have any questions or comments about the video, please do come and visit us. And the address of our Facebook fan page is now being put on the screen. We'd love to see you. We'd love to receive your comments. But for this video, that's all, and we look forward to seeing you in the next one. And until then, goodbye.